You know, one thing I find really fun to do with my user base, given that it's rather modest in number still, if it, uh, if it were as big as, say, Super Skarmory's, it wouldn't work at all, but since it's rather modest, I find that a pretty fun thing to do with my viewers is throw an odd reference to something and see if anyone will get it. I have already did so for um, Half-Life Full-Life Consequences in the Goldenrod, but I did it again in the last video, and I am surely going to crush some spirits here by saying that I did not, in fact, come up with the... the... the what was it already? Oh yeah, the chicken-flavored dishwasher. That wasn't my idea at all. Now, I'll be honest. Usually, usually, I'm as biased against fanfiction as I am against cosplay. And I've already covered cosplay way back in the rock tunnel during my Red LP, but fanfiction, I find, is almost as bad. Almost? It's probably even worse, because try finding a good fanfiction. It's a real challenge. And yet, I stumbled upon a gem of a fanfiction. Well, it doesn't entirely deserve to be called a fanfiction since it's based on a pre-existing canon work. But anyway, the shiny Feraligator managed to nail it. I am referring to the retelling of Pokemon Coliseum by Bob and Bill of the Cerebee forums. I'm, I'm going to be honest here. I have never read a better fanfiction in my entire life. Fan fictions, as I said, you, it's an art, and not enough people who try their hand at it are good enough. Or even close to being good enough. Most of the time it ends up being junk like uh, the aforementioned Full Life Consequences, which only became good because someone did a Gmod adaptation of it. That would be the only exception there. But otherwise, People who do fanfictions tend to suck at it, and those who would be good ha at it have something better to do with their time, so yeah, good fanfictions are a rarity, so I strongly recommend that you check this one out, I'm going to put a link in the movie description so there's no excuse, and if you still miss out on it, I will come down to your house personally and beat you up with a cactus. Since the shiny Feraligator it seemed to insist uh, that I make another reference, well, here you go, cactus time. So we got a fisherman here, and oh, he wants a battle, but this one's going to be off screen because I guarantee that he hasn't changed his lineup at all since I fought him. I think it's even less than five videos ago, so he hasn't changed his lineup at all. So, another thing that would be worthy of being smashed over the head with a cactus would be missing out on Pokemon Mystery Dungeon 2 Explorers of the Sky. If you don't have time or darkness, Explorers of the Sky is coming out next Monday, I think, in uh, North America. And, as I said, it's a must buy if you are a Pokemon fan. It's got the gameplay, it's got the music, it's got the story even, a traditional weakness in Pokemon games. It's got everything. And we're talking about a pretty dark story here. At one point the characters even contemplate suicide. And that's not a joke, that's a major plot point. Okay, I'm gonna change my lead since Raikou isn't the best choice for a lead in the mountains, to be honest. And once I'm, I think I'm uh, near the south of Route 45, so what I'm gonna do, I'm going to head to Route 46 because I think when I came here the first time about 50 videos ago, I think I missed out on something. Yep, we got a trainer here that I completely missed out on. I apologize if he's even less of a challenge than the others because he's gonna have those really low, low, low levels, but hey, it's money that I missed out on, and I want me monies! Also, for the stat heads among you, this is our favorite time of the month. The stats for the Smogon Shoddy server came out yesterday. And what is the major subject of discussion, Greytail? Is it Agron who finally got out of the darkness with Rockhead Head Smash? 
Or could it be Crobat with Super Fang? Or Walrein with Super Fang? Not even, even though Crobat climbed to the top 50, despite having Super Fang for only like, what, 12 days? Not even half of the month? Well, the big topic of discussion is... Good ol' Scizor! Yep! If you haven't seen the stats, Scizor is used 60% more, I think, than the nearest Pokémon, which would be Salamence. That's... I mean, 60% more! This is... Wow! Scizor is on almost a third of all teams. The only other Pokémon that went past that was Garchomp, and we all know what happened to it. Not saying that Scizor is going to be uber anytime soon, because as someone on Smogon put it, and I couldn't have put it better if I tried, Garchomp was used because of its own strength. Scizor is being used because of the other Pokémon that are omnipresent in the metagame, and they just so happen that Scizor rapes them all! And then there's the fact that Scizor is more easily countered than Garchomp ever was. So I don't think we're going to be seeing Scizor as a suspect anytime soon, though it's still a bit weird that, you know, there's such a big gap between the first two, it's almost ridiculous. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to head to the Lake of Rage, because Wesley is here on a Wednesday and he's going to give me... I don't know which item, I don't really care, it's probably not good anyway. Come on, is Wesley any anywhere here? Doesn't look like it. I don't think this is Wesley, nope. So where is he? I don't think... There, there, come on, there's not that much room to explore in the Lake of Rage, so... WHERE IS WESLEY? I DON'T GET IT! Oh, well, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna head back to Blackthorn and back down to Route 45 to beat up some more trainers, and I'm going to check this whole thing out when I get the chance. Where is it? Um, I don't, I don't have any idea, to be honest. But, yeah, other than that, well, there were a few Pokémon that got notable uh, increases in usage. We got the Crobat, who's now among the top 50. We got Rose Raid as well, which is coming back in full force. But, most importantly, other than Scizor, I mean, the most noticeable has got to be Agron. No longer is it relegated to being Rhyperior's completely useless cousin. It's now, well, I wouldn't say it overshadows Rhyperior or that it's underneath it. It's in a complete different division now because of, well, that whole head smash with rock head thing. So yeah, anyway, the the hard gold soul silver changes were only there for like a third of the month. We are gonna get the full picture in October. And as for Ubers, well I mentioned Scizor earlier, it's still standing strong at number seven in Ubers. But that doesn't mean that it should be Uber because guess what else just showed up in the top ten? Fortress! Yep! Fortress, who shares the same typing and thus quadruple weakness as Scizor, is in the top 10 as well. Now, as I said in my winners and losers column last year, whereas Garchomp and Flygon were stepping on each other's toes with Garchomp dominating, it's not the case with these two because Scizor is all about offense, Fortress is all about support, so the two are pretty much mutually exclusive outside of the identical typing, but still something like Fortress showing up in the top 10 in Ubers, that is damn impressive. I mean, to give you an idea, Donphan isn't such a bad Pokémon, but nobody uses it anymore! Why? Because Fortress does about the same thing, except so much better, and despite sharing the same typing as the number one Pokémon in Overuse. So, I'm going to check out if there is anything there. Yep, there's an item, and I'm going to stop this for now. Next video should hopefully be Mario 3 if nothing else comes up.